Right, I'm about to start cutting out the butterfly bracket that I described earlier. Before I do that, there's one or two things uh, to sort out. It is important every so often to check that the blade is square to the table because if it's not, you'll get inconsistent results and the work will be different at the back to what it is at the front and it will look odd. So it's a good idea to check that that is, is at right angles. You can do it usually simply using one of these, a little tri-square, a little metal one, or even one of these. Uh, my blade is absolutely perpendicular with the table. It's absolutely perfect, spot on. It's always important to check that every so often because they do. there is adjustment and they do go out of square, especially if you altered it to do some bevel cutting. So that's one thing you should check. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to choose a blade to use because this pattern is quite a delicate pattern. It's not that delicate, but there are some delicate parts. So we'll go over to my blade selection cupboard and I'll show you what we've got to choose from. This is my blade cupboard, so to speak. Uh, I'll just show you what I've got. On this side I've got ordinary fret saw blades, general purpose ones. On this side special purpose and you'll notice these up here are the reverse tooth blades and I'm going to be using the reverse tooth blade for this because it does give a finer finish. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a number five blade from here and get one out. There we go, that's a number five. So I'm going to use that initially for this pattern. I have got finer ones if necessary. The blades do go down to a size double O but these are very, very thin indeed and awkward to use. So I'm going to try number five to start with. You'll notice that I've got a little lever on my saw. This is an extra piece I put on there. When, you, when you're getting older, you do find that turning a knob all the time, it, it does sort of get a bit wearing on your thumbs and things, uh, especially if you've got problems in the wrist. And this little lever, is, is you'll see it on one of my other videos, it's just a piece of Meccano and I just drilled it and tapped it and put that lever in. It makes all the difference, that's all. So basically that's all the preliminaries and now we're ready to start cutting. I'm now going to cut this little piece out here and you can see there's a lot of very sharp corners. There's a very sharp piece up here, there's a sharp corner there, there's a sharp corner there, down in here is quite sharp and also up in there. So um, what I'm going to have to do for example to do this down here I'm going to cut across here to here and then down into that corner then I shall reverse the saw and go back up into this corner. But before I do that, I'll cut these little bits first, remembering that you cut from this end inwards and from this end inwards, and the same here, rather than the other way, because if it's going to break off, it's more likely to break off when you're cutting out from it rather than when you're cutting in from it. So without further ado, I'll have a go. I'm going at it very slowly, I'm just taking my time, as you can probably see better what I'm doing then. When you're cutting, always remember to try and keep, the, you know, keep this down firmly because it will jump up otherwise. If you've got one of those silly hold down feet on your saw, my advice will be to take it off. They're nothing but a nuisance. You'll soon get used to holding it, it's second nature, but if you don't, it'll, it will bounce up and down. So I've gone into that corner there, look, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to back the saw out now, and now I'm going to cut down into this here. So what I should do is I should go up here, keeping away from the other one, and then I'll attack it by, from this angle here just by turning the saw around. I mean you could technically go around there because it is a rounded uh, part of the flower so to speak. You should go into this corner here but I won't attempt to do a turn there. If you do it will show up. So I'll just stop there and then I should go back up here into the hole I've made. And now I'm going to cut this pointed one out here, so I'll do the same as before, turn the long run. Right up into that corner there. Now there is a slight round there, so what I might do, I might do an about turn there, just to show how it happens, like that look. But if you want to, you can just go into there and then back off. And I'll cut into there so it should pop out. There we go. That's a sharp corner there, so I'm going to go into the middle point here. As I mentioned before, don't go in like this, slanting cut, because you'll have a job to cut the other direction. Go in at right angles, or as near right angles as you can. It doesn't have to be exactly right angles. And then do a quick about turn like that. And then go gently into the corner. Now having done that, now you see what I mean? Now we've got a, a sharp corner for the saw to butt into, to, to bite. So it cuts in much better. 
the saw will tend to jump off the line when you get into a very sharp corner like that so that is common it will happen obviously I'm not gonna show you the whole process because you'll, you'll get bored uh, I'll just show you odd bits and pieces from time to time and then I'll show you the finished thing when it's done people say you don't need a variable speed saw but it is handy um, especially if you're a beginner I'll stop there and get a sharp corner if you're um, if you're a beginner especially, if you have a saw that's only got one speed and you have it running on that maximum speed, it'll rip through the wood quite fast. Um, I'll just turn it off a moment. Uh, sometimes, um, if you've got thin wood especially, it'll bout through the cut so quickly that you'll have a job to control it, especially if you're a beginner to it. You do get used to it. Like a lot of saws, you can alter the speed ahead. And I'll just demonstrate, you can have it going full speed like that. Or you can have it going at hand frame speed and you can turn it down and it's barely moving there you see, look how smooth that is. And that's just like using a hand frame basically, but it does give you more control. So if you've got something very delicate or very thin to cut, then it is better to have a variable speed saw and slow the speed down and you can take your time because otherwise you're quick trying to concentrate on the cut, but at the same time it's whipping through the wood. Before you know it, you've gone off the line. So, you know, cut the speed down a little bit. It does make a difference. Naturally, of course, in fairness, the, the faster the blade is going, the smoother the cut, and the slower the blade is going, then the less smooth the cut is, so there are drawbacks, but in most cases, especially with a reverse touch blade, it's not really a problem. Um, the other thing to mention about it is, uh, when you're a beginner and you're cutting thin wood, it is much more difficult cutting thin wood than, than um, thicker wood, shall we say. Not too thick, obviously the thicker you get, the harder it gets. And, and the saw struggling more but if you've got very thin wood a good tip is to stack cut even if you only want one copy of what you're making sometimes it's worth putting two or more at the back of its thin plywood two or three uh, that makes it a bit bit thicker and the saw is less likely to rip through it and you get more control over it I think so I, I generally always put an extra copy anyway at the back there we go and that's that then in other videos, I've often mentioned about the fact that when you buy a scroll saw, don't buy one of those really cheap ones. That's if you want to do fret work like this, like we're doing here, because you're going to have to keep putting that blade through the hole, which means you've got to keep taking the blade out and putting it back in again. And I've explained in other videos um, why it's important to get a saw with a quick tension release. That's probably the most important, and a quick blade release, a, a quick clamp on the Hegner it's called. Because even on this design here, uh, which is fairly simple, there are 23 cutouts, internal cuts that is, which means I've got to change that blade 23 times. And I have done designs where it's been like 130 or more cutouts. And at first it's not too bad, but if you've got a difficult uh, a saw with a, a blade change that takes a lot of time and hassle, and it's inconvenient by the time you've changed that blade half a dozen times you'll be starting to get fed up and you'll lose the will to live and and in some cases it can put you off fret work forever as if you've got a decent saw like this where the job is very easy it's not a problem at all you don't even notice it and it's quite quite nice doing it. it's quite addictive actually cutting these um, internal bits out but it is much better if you've got a saw like this. I mean, some of those cheap saws, they're okay for general woodwork. If you just want to use it in the workshop to replace, say, a band saw, they're good at cutting curves out. They will cut, but they are awkward to use uh, for things like fret work, which is what they're designed for, really. And also the ones, some of them have what they call um, pinned blades, which is basically like a coping saw blade with a pin through. Hopeless for doing this sort of work because you've got the pin in the way. You can convert some of them to this sort of blade. You know, if you're going to do proper fret work, try and buy a decent one. They are expensive, decent uh, scroll saws, but if you buy one, if you get one like this Hegner particularly, uh, it will last a lifetime. This one's over 20 years old. It's done a lot of work. My grandson uses it all the time, and I use it, well, practically every day for something or other and uh, it'll last you a long time and, and you will forget how much you paid for it originally and you'll be glad that you did pay for it eventually because it, it'll last a long time whereas a cheap saw you'll after a while you'll either put you off for good and you'll pack it in or you'll want to buy a better saw anyway in which case you might as well have bought the better one in the first place mightn't you if you can't afford a new one and, and obviously they are very expensive especially the Heckner ones 
look out for a second hand one. There's nothing wrong with a good second hand saw. You often see them on eBay advertised. Hegners are, do hold quite a premium price. But again, that's a good reason for buying a Hegner, is it not? That they do hold their price well. And if you decide to buy one and then you get fed up, you can sell it again. That's the thing. Anyway, I've gabbled enough. I'll get on and do a bit more cutting. I'm going to go down here and protect that because I can do that. So you've got to think ahead when you're doing this. I can go back round there into that corner rather than cutting across there. I can start from this point here. So I'm going to take the saw down there. But what I can do, instead of going straight in there, I can do this little bit first because the sharp corner there and the sharp corner there. So I've got to go into that. So I'll cross there. Yet. You just want to think ahead of it really when you're doing this. I'll, um, I'll do that corner first. You'll notice it's tending to jump up a little bit more. Uh, that's because I've upped the speed of it, try and get it doing a bit quicker. Into there and then turn it around and do it to that corner. Now you see, it won't move. No, I can't move it because what's happened, the little piece has dropped in the hole. So the best way, the only way really, is to stop the saw and get it out. There you go, it's just that tiny little piece, look, and it caught in the hole there and stopped the, the work from moving. to fret work, you'll find the work will jump and pass about. I'll just show you by cutting into the side here. You see, like that. The faster it goes, the more it'll do it. You soon get used to that. Uh, beginners find that annoying and they don't know how to cope with it. And they often use the hold down tool that comes with some of the, certainly with the cheaper saws. But my advice is take it off, it gets in the way. You soon get used to it, you, you naturally hold it down as you're working, it, it just becomes second nature and it won't bother you eventually, but occasionally it will jump up like that when you, your concentration goes or it catches on something, but generally it's not a problem, once you get used to it, it'll go away. Before I go any further, I'm going to change the blade I think, uh, this blade's had quite a bit of use and it's getting a bit worn out now, um, my grandson was using the, the saw with the same blade in all Saturday afternoon. So he's probably wore it out now, and I notice it's not biting, not cutting quite as well. So I'll just change the blade over. Just pop the lower blade holder in the blade changing slot here. Get your clock key. Undo it. Take the old blade out. Don't get it mixed up and put the old one back in again. It's easily done. Take your new blade. Make sure you get the right way around. Uh, the teeth have to point downwards, don't forget. Uh, the, on this particular saw, it's a reverse tooth, so the bottom uh, few teeth will point in the opposite direction. But gen you can feel it with your finger, and, and it's, uh, they're pointed down that way. So pop that in the clamp, and then just a simple matter of tightening it up. Try and get it as centred as you can. Do it up fairly tight, otherwise it will fly out. This is the way it should be done. Um, if you look at that, you try and get the blade right bang in the centre of the knife edge block so that it fits in the in the bracket underneath properly. And make sure when you put the blade in you get it the right way around. If you put it the wrong way around you won't get on very well. If you do put the blade in upside down by the way, apart from the fact it won't cut properly, uh, it'll jump about all over the place, even worse than it does normally. So if you, do, if you find it's jumping about, check that you haven't got it in upside down. It's easy to learn. We've all done it. Everybody's done it. Right, so that's a new blade now. Don't forget, when you put a new blade in, it will cut more vigorously, so you'd be a bit more careful than you were before with the old blade, or just turn the speed down a little bit, because it'll be a bit more severe now, the cut. So now I'm just going to cut this little bit out here. Um, what I can do there, the leaves sort of join here, so I, don't, I haven't made a hole in this, because I can go straight through there and cut that at the same time, hopefully. So let's have a go. Turn this all right. Now, I've got to think where I'm going to start. Now, sharp corners there, uh, to go up in there. So what I might do actually, um, I could either go in the side or I could go up the top and work from there. I think I'm going to go into the top this time. Let's try it and see how we get on anyway. We'll start at the top corner. Yeah, you can notice the blade cuts, it bites a lot more now. And then around there like that, nice sweeping curve.
Right, right that's that. I just turned the saw off. And by the way, uh, when I'm telling you various ways of doing it, uh, this is just my way. I'm not saying it's the right way, and I'm not saying it's the best way. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who do absolutely wonderful work, and they probably do it totally different to me. Uh, I've been doing it for quite a few years now, and this is the way I do it. And I found it's best for me, but it's not necessarily best for you. You might find a better way of doing it. And it's wise to watch other people and see how they uh, manage it. Because there are some people out there who do absolutely fantastic work that uh, far surpasses anything I've ever done. Uh, and amazingly, some of them use those awful spiral blades. And in my opinion, as I've mentioned in many of my videos, they're the devil's work. Uh, I couldn't do anything with them. I've tried them. I've got some, but I very, very rarely use them. In fact, I don't think I've used a spiral blade in the last 20 years. I don't, I don't know where they manage. I think they're the devil's work. <laughs> I've seen some of the work people do, they put things on Facebook and that, what they cut with spiral blades, and it's truly amazing. I can't imagine how they do it. I'll take my hat off to them, because I'm sure I couldn't do it. The things are virtually uncontrollable. They go all over the place. You can have really steady hands and uh, nerves of steel, I would say, to use spiral blades. If you're new to fret work, take my advice. Do not even consider spiral blades. Just don't do it, because if you do, it'll put you off for life. Unless you turn out to be an expert, of course, but I wouldn't use them. Anyway, back to this. Uh, when you're cutting, stack cutting like this, two pieces joined together, or sometimes I've even cut with five pieces joined together with thin plywood, just occasionally just make sure it's still stuck together because on this, in this case I've got solid tape holding the outside and if it was to come loose or anything the pattern would, would come apart and uh, you'd get awful results. So just just keep your eye on it and make sure it's held tightly together. And if it's not, put a bit more solid tape on. Whilst I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, I bet there'll be people watching this video who are far more expert at fret work than I am. Who will be saying to themselves, "My God, what is that bloke doing? What is he doing?" <laughs> I'm sure of it because I'm probably the same critical when I watch somebody else and I think, "Oh, they shouldn't be doing that." And you're probably sat there thinking, if you're an expert at it, you're probably thinking. What a daft way of doing it. I wouldn't do it like that. So I'm always conscious of that when I'm doing things. That There's going to be somebody out there who's going to say, you're doing that all wrong, mate. You've got to do it the different way. Anyway, it's my way. 